You know, I think we're tired. And I think we should stop for the night. It's going to be a long day tomorrow and then I have to turn around and start working again. So I need a little bit of a break tonight. Get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Just worried that we're running out of time here. We're Chris and Sandra. In 2022, we bought a boat we named Bataway. On a foggy May morning, we said goodbye to Port Dover and headed down Lake Erie, through the Welling Canal, and on to Lake Ontario. We had a summer of fun boat projects and explored Lake Ontario and the famous Canadian Heritage Canal System, the Trent Severn Waterway. We met some great people and saw amazing sights in beautiful Ontario. We've got plans to overhaul the interior of Bataway in the spring, so join two not-so-young kids as we dive headfirst into our 2023 adventure. Good progress yesterday. Today, uh, I hope to do two things. I want to build my first drawer, see how that goes, see what it looks like. And if my wire came in, uh, comes in later this morning, I want to run the electrical. I'm also thinking more and more about the plumbing. This, this boat uses, uh, I think it's polybutylene, polybutylene plumbing, which is uh, an old, it's called Quest, Q-E-S-T, I believe. Um, and um, it was discontinued uh, in like 95, 96, about four or five years after this boat was made, because they, they found that the joints were failing. Uh, we haven't had that problem, but obviously I guess it's a problem. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do. I can, a lot of people just use PEX, uh, which wouldn't be a bad solution, except that the, um, the press on fittings, I think they're called shark bite are really expensive. I'm not thrilled about that. Uh, the other option seems to be something called SeaTech or whale. And, and I want to see what the, uh, marina here, if they sell anything, SeaTech looks like a really good option. It's basically it uses PEX hose essentially and uh, their own custom press-on fittings, which is kind of attractive in this setup. It's tight up here, it's not too, too bad. And because I had to bang around the sealing mechanism a little bit yesterday, this door, when it's sealed, sits just a little proud on the bottom. So I'd like to fix that too. Anyway, I, I'm not unhappy with it. Um, I'm, I'm not going to finish mounting any of this. Uh, right now I've got it tacked in with a screw and I've got it sitting on this. But until we get this um, countertop done, I don't want to finish this. So I'll run my electrical and, and do other things. But I'll, the actual finishing is going to wait now until we get this countertop in place, which is waiting on our laminate. I bought one set of slides, uh, and these are soft clothes slides. And um, they're a bit more expensive, but I think they're going to be worth it. Because the soft clothes really essentially um, acts like a lock. The drawer stays pretty closed unless you tug on it. So, um, We'll see what we think about that, and then we'll have to decide whether or not we want to install an actual latching mechanism as well. I used half inch plywood for this entire project. Um, normally I'd use three quarter inch, and, and normally you'd build each section independently. But as you can see here, I built one, one, one uh, unit with single plywood walls. The reason for this is, is, is simply weight. Right? I'm trying not to introduce a lot of weight on the boat. So I didn't go to three quarter inch, which, which would have been a lot easier to work with. So far, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm happy with it. The more I glue and fasten this down, um, the structurally more rigid it becomes. And obviously once this countertop is glued into place and screwed, uh, it's gonna be a very solid unit. So uh, the drawers, again, it, some people use half inch for drawers. Some people use three quarter inch. I'm going to try half inch uh, drawers with a quarter inch base and European style cabinetry, which is a new one for me. I've only done face, uh, front faced cabinetry, cabinetry in the past. 
Um, and uh, I'm going to use, I'm, I'm trying for inset drawers. So hopefully it all works. A lot of firsts here. Let's get started. A receptacle and a switch and I've, I haven't finished doing a receptacle here. Uh, I spent the first part of the day running the wire and um, what I've done in the galley is there's now two branch circuits in the galley. The first branch circuit starts over at the stern end of the galley and you can see uh, down Halfway down the side of the um, this the uh, cabinet wall, I've got a uh, well. It may not be obvious, but I've got a GF a ground fault interrupted uh, receptacle that also has uh, USB. And uh, frankly, <laughs> this thing is very deep, and I picked a box that was too small. And so my box fill just wasn't working out. There's too much wire and receptacle in there for it to all fit. So I've bought a bigger receptacle. Unfortunately, this is the only thing that I could find that made sense. So the wiring will go off to one side and the, the actual uh, GFCI receptacle will sit on the other side and I'll just get a face plate that is only, you know, one side is blank. So that's the first branch circuit. And uh, from there, the wire runs under, the, under here and comes up here to this side, to this switch. I put the switch in just because uh, if, if we wanted to be able to shut things off, we could. <coughs> so first branch circuit controls this receptacle which again, I've put USB outlets on here. We struggled a lot last year with extension cords everywhere and charging cables everywhere and wall warts everywhere. So the goal is to have a few strategically placed USB circuits so that we're not uh, struggling the way we did last year. From there, this circuit comes down, goes under here to the stove area and you can you might be able to see there, there's two receptacles down here. So that first branch circuit finishes off on the bottom receptacle where there'll be a plug-in for either the stovetop or the, um, the little oven that we're installing. The second branch circuit starts at the top and there, there again, there's a GFCI ground fault interrupted um, outlet and it runs from there 
uh, up to the second receptacle on the left at, uh, at waist height. So in other words, the two main appliances will be on two separate branch circuits and the two additional outlets will also be on separate circuits. So hopefully we avoid tripping um, and hopefully they'll work. I guess we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> the uh, last thing that I did is I ran a wire from the um, bottom outlet so that it's on the first branch circuit. It goes up here, disappears in here and comes out in this drawer. And you can see just the bare wire there. And I'm gonna put another uh, outlet there. And the idea is uh, we'll, to have a, um, a drawer for charging things. So we'll, we'll probably vent it, put a fan in. And then when we're charging things, they just go in the drawer and out of the way and hopefully it's clean. This is the old map drawer. And frankly, we don't use maps as much as we used to. So that seems like a good repurposing of it. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to it, but that's generally what's been going on. Okay, not helping. Why, I'm just giving you light. Because you're putting it right in my eyes. Do you have more fun when I'm here? Oh, Marjorie Sandra. <laughs> do you get more done when I'm not here? Or do Depends. You, or do you get more done when I'm here? So we're using ball bearing drawer slides and um, they're stainless steel, obviously, because of the environmental concerns, rust. And these are soft closed drawer slides. So the way they work is you screw them in uh, here to the inside of the cabinet and we're doing inset drawers so when I set them, I set them half an inch back because the drawer will eventually sit there. So when you say inset, you mean flush? They'll be flush when we're done, yeah. They're inset drawers. And... Um, so soft slider, those really f fancy ones where you just kind of yeah, push it? Yeah, we can show it once they're installed, right? So yeah. They they don't they won't bang closed and they actually kind of stay it's like a latch essentially so that when they're closed they stay closed unless you physically pull on them. And for the time being we're going to try this. We're still um arguing a little bit about whether we need some sort of latch that will lock it. We we haven't really been in a lot of heavy seas. So Chris seems to think that maybe it'll be fine, but there's no point in investing another a couple hundred dollars on fancy locks, latches, until we know if this is going to work. I think the very first time we're in rougher weather than we've had, we'll know. And there's a lot of guides you can buy. Um, like Craig sells a, a guide tool. Everybody talks about how to get them lined up. What does the guide tool do? It, it tells you where to drill your holes. You just attach it to your cabinet and just start drilling holes. But oh. I watched a video. I'm not even sure who it was. It was a woman. And she said, yeah, this is really easy. All I do is exactly what I've done here. And I'll show you what she does with the actual drawer. If anyone else um, recognizes this and who knows who the YouTube video person was, let us know. Is this going to be magic? No. Oh. I like magic. 
Why is this not? I took the took me a while to figure out what they were talking about, but everybody goes, the slides are adjustable in four dimensions. And I, what they, they're adjustable in two dimensions. Ugh. Basically, there's horizontally so slotted holes on the uh, part that attaches to the cabinet wall. So if you set it in the middle of that horizontal slot, then you can adjust it left or right, forward or back. That's the first adjustment. I don't understand that meaning. There's a horizontal slot yeah. where the screw goes in. So you can move it back and forth. So forward if you need to, like once you're done, if say the door, the wall, the um, this final face that we put on the drawers was proud or something you could undo the screws loosen them and adjust your slide to try and make it all work okay and then where the drawers attach the slots are vertical so then you can adjust it up or down so you do the best you can and most accurately and if it's a bit off you have a bit of adjustment yeah I thought i'd be spending forever adjusting the last set of slides and they just worked so props to that woman I have to say the slides detach and then you can put them on the drawer and then put it back in mm -hmm. All you can do is take a quarter inch spacer and the cabinet, this stuff that we've been slicing up is quarter inch. And you drop it in off the floor in this case. And then you take the drawer. Set it on top of your shim. <laughs> and of course the slides go in. I'll hold this side. Yeah. Oh, you want this to go in with it? Yeah, flush to the front to stop. I was holding it out because I thought you wanted that. So far, so good? So far, so good. So you pin it on the front here, yeah. and then take it out and do the rest? Yeah. Right now, you should be able to see the vertical slot. So now it's pinned at the front, but not at the other side. So now you just pull it out. Yeah, and pin it again. Uh, on another vertical one? Yeah. So is there like a catch there or something? Yeah. And what do you do, pinch it or Find lift it? it first. And does it lift or? You pull it up. Ah. That's it. That's pretty simple. It is. Assuming it worked. Uh, that didn't work. That's not going back. Yeah, I know. Something didn't work here. That was going on. It was sitting further back come down too low, but the drawer is coming in too low. What so, does that mean, coming in too low? Well, it's hitting along the bottom when it here. 
No, it's touching. Even. It's touching this thing. Yeah. I'm not sure what I did wrong this time. You know, just on both sides. Yeah. See you adjust it up because you've got the space. You want to put it in? Oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, go ahead, tighten it. Is it in reverse right now? Yes. I don't want to overdo it. Oh, it's so it's is that worse. because the back is diving? Yeah, now the back's hitting. I don't know what went wrong here. But something sure did. I stuck a spacer in there, which probably had something to do with it. Oh, you kept it up. It really is simple. Yeah, it's just a little fidgety at the end. Give it a good switch. On to installing the last drawer slide. Uh, what we've been doing is just measuring up from each drawer to figure out where the hardware goes. You can buy jigs, but um, obviously we didn't. Hopefully this will work. It seems to be working. These will all have face plates uh, installed on them. So there'll only be an eighth of an inch gap uh, between the, the faces of each of the drawers when we're done. Do you need me? Like it's 5.30. <laughs> I'm done. I'm already somewhere with a drink. Two instead of three. Yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cold, it's going to be a hot drink. I've never had a buttered rum. So I have this little thing I do at the end of them now where I have you sweeping. And I run it with music. And Are you serious? Yeah. So it's the next day and we're just less than a week until we splash. So we're starting to feel the pressure. We have a day in Toronto the week coming up to help our youngest, Helen, get her stuff packed up. She's finishing university and headed to Calgary. So we're starting to feel the pressure. But we decided today, now that the drawers, the skeleton of the drawers are in and they're actually useful, that we're going to clean up the boat because also the day after we get the water back at the dock, we have to um, move out of the Airbnb. So there's a lot of shifting of materials, supplies and belongings. So we're gonna start in the V-Birth today and we're gonna take the drawers that we had with all our stuff and we're gonna move them to the new drawers until we can get better organized. towards you, about half an inch.
I gotta sand it anyway. I know, I just wanna get it off. And we're gonna epoxy this. I think Sandra might have mentioned yesterday, I'll mention it again. Uh, we've been waiting for our laminate and um, the online delivery tracking said that it was in transit for the last week. And it turns out it was delivered back on the 18th, like 10 days ago. And it's been sitting in the marina office, had been sitting in the marina office that whole time. So we went and got it yesterday and yes, yesterday evening was a bit of a panic because we uh, prepped the countertop. So we, we uh, used the countertop as a template. We cut the uh, laminate with about a two inch overhang along these edges so that we could trim it and if we make any mistakes. But we matched it in the far front corner, the bow, the bow edge and the, um, the port edge. And then we epoxied the sink in with a, a two-part epoxy. And today, uh, this morning, what I'm going to do is put some filler in so that it's a nice smooth surface. And once that's had a chance to dry for a couple hours, maybe three, I'm going to sand this whole surface to take any blemishes and imperfections off. And if I have any holes that I need to fill, I'm going to fill them. And then we're just going to put the laminate in place and wait until after the launch uh, because we need to get it warm in here to use the... Um, contact cement that's used between the plywood surface and the laminate to, to put the laminate in place. You know, I think we're tired, and I think we should stop for the night. It's going to be a long day tomorrow, and then I have to turn around and start working again, so I need a little bit of a break tonight. Get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Just worried that we're going to...